there's a way to make an entrance. This is my destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Is an older chap, mate. I said, I can't touch. Come on, Tuds. Come on, Tuds. Come on, Come on, Tuds. 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 <laughs> How much are you in, darling, sweetheart, light of my life? Nothing, dearest, sweetheart, fruit of my tree. What do you mean, nothing? That's what you're gonna get, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Yes, you, Vincent, this is a barber shop, not a public library. You mean you cut people here? Yes. I'm in the wrong place, it's the betting shop I want. Look, <laughs> just put your backside on that seat. <laughs> Honestly, Paul Pye, Sand Lip, give me the tip. This old man owns the horse. I thought they owned Mellow Fellow. No, no, his cousin owns that one. Them have them finger in everything. What do we have? Oh, he's off again. What are you talking about? When it comes to business in England, black people don't have any. West Indians don't have any. Oh, sorry, Mr. Wiseman. <laughs> what, what's so special about you, then? Well, some Africans are extremely good businessmen. <laughs> Some Africans asking for a punch on the nose. <laughs> look, 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 I'm a West Indian businessman, and so is Desmond. That's what I mean. You don't have anything. <laughs> the Asians own corner shops, takeaways, restaurants. Race horses. Turks and the Greeks own fish and chips. And doner kebabs. Doner kebabs? You doner? What's in them, dear? Uh... <laughs> Apart from a barber shop in Peckham, and a few dodgy goods off the back of a lorry. What business do we own? Well, judging from the papers, we seem to have a monopoly on muggings and street crime. Well, what a negative conversation. Now, we are excelling in all sorts of areas, and I don't mean just athletics and pop music and boxing. We now have members of parliament. Hmm? Yeah. We in education, hmm? local government, on the telly. Take our eldest son, Michael, for instance. I'd like to take him as far away as possible and leave him there. <laughs> I wouldn't have a bad word said against him. He works very hard in that bank. Huh. Now, if you want to achieve, you just have to go for it. He gone so far, we never even see him. <laughs> well, I'd better go for it. What do you think you're going for? Sand its throat. Find out what happened to that horse of his. Do you still want to lift down the market, show? Yes, thanks. Well, I suppose I better go for it, too. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee, Shell. Anytime, Matthew. Oh, what's your lecture today? The propensity to consume due to the changing economic infrastructure. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lee, uh, can you drop me in the high road? You name it, Matt, and I'll drop you in it. <laughs> Hi. Uh, take a seat. You know, Boxing's not the same since Cassius Clay changed his name to Muhammad Ali. I mean, what kind of a name is that that's not a boxing name? You're right, man. You should have a name like uh, Sugar, Bama, Rocky, Dark Destroyer, a ragamuffin. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's why the Americans don't take Frank Bruno as a serious contender. I mean, he should have a name like Brutal Bruno, or Crucial Bruno, or, you know, I mean, Harry Bruno. <laughs> why, that is a good point. Uh, why, I hear about the wet look, <laughs> but that is wet. So wet you can bathe in it. <laughs> yes, it's my own product. I'm here to see the proprietor. Nobody here by that name. <laughs> That's me. What can I do you for? Daryl, 
Daryl Montefiore, Short and Curly's. You must have heard of us. No. You ever hear about uh, Short and Curly's, Pope Pat? Yeah, man. Short and Curly's the are... The fastest growing new chain in London. We have a number of salons in the West End, Victoria, North Kensington. North Kensington? Where is that? Uh, Paddington. <laughs> That's nice. You see, Popeye, a black businessman. My name is Desmond. Pleased to meet you. This young man's only young, and he's achieved all this. In the next ten years, he'll be a international businessman. <laughs> That's very nice of you, Des. I don't have to tell you it's not been an easy road, but you have to make the most of your opportunities and, uh, Go for it. Spoken like a true businessman. Well, it takes a good businessman to know a good businessman, Des. Actually, the reason why I'm here, Des, is that I want to buy you out. What? We've done our market research, and we think that Peckham is potentially a very profitable area. It has a large black community who I think will appreciate our creative styles. Now, you've been a barber here for more than 20 years, so rather than waste needless time and money setting up a rival salon, <laughs> we'd like to buy you out. There is a great potential in this place for today's entrepreneur. So rather than ham you into the ground with competition, we're going to give you a way out. So what do you think, Des? You know what I think, Daryl. Tell me, Des. <laughs> I think you ought to get out of my shop now. <laughs> well, I'll give you a good price. Why don't you think about it and give me a ring? Or I can come back next Friday. Out! So Friday about three. Out! Have a nice day. <laughs> Damn cheap. You know what I think? What? I think you should ask him how much he was offering. Who was that? He calls himself Daryl Montefiore. Oh, short and curlies. I know them. Yeah, what's wrong with that? What's wrong is that slippery little wet look man want to buy our shop. A file of facts, man. What's a file of facts, man? A wally who walks around with file of faxes just to show everyone how busy and important they are. Mm -hmm. I better tell Matthew about the file of faxes. You can't buy our shop. This is our home. You didn't say yes, did you? You didn't even let him make an offer. Oh, good for you, Dad. No one's going to take this away from us. We don't want some wet look blow dry clip joint. Yeah, this is more than a barber shop, Mr. Ambrose. It is? This is a community centre. Is it? A confessional, a Drop in. Yeah, this is a place where people serve tea and toast, watch TV, and engage in social intercourse. Not in my shop, you know. <laughs> but hardly anybody come here to cut their hair anymore. I would take the money if I was you. No, you don't want to give in to people like that, ruthless capitalists. Yeah, hairdressing change, just that to scalp you. Oh, time to mobilise. So we'll start a campaign. Yeah. We're sure how much Desmond's is needed. Support the little man. Oh, sorry, Mr. <laughs> Ambrose. Leave it to us, Dad. You see, pork pie? Who said black people aren't enterprising, eh? Well, I think I better go short on curly and get a year cut, because I'm not... <laughs> go sit down, you ass. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> you just gonna stand there? Eh? 26 years running your own shop is not a bad innings. With the money you'd get, you could build your own house back home. What are you gonna do? Stand and fight or take the money and run? I think you should take the money and run, and I go run with you. <laughs> oh, shut up, Popeye. Look at you sweeping the floor. You gonna do this all your life? Remember when we used to sit on the seawall dreaming of England? <laughs> We thought we'd be the kings of jazz. Uh, we were just Georgetown dreamers, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet sticks, jazzy dee, pork pie. Shirley Father says she was mad to come up here with you. But you always said you will make your fortune and prove him wrong. Remember? Right. There's no harm in finding out what he's offering. You ain't got a home to go to? Nope. <laughs> All right, we're going. Who was that you're calling? Oh, nobody in particular. It was the short on Curly's man, wasn't it? Well, I just started, man. Well, how many times I have to tell you no? But it might be a good offer. We might not get another one again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is our shop, Desmond. Hmm? It was a long, hard fight for us to buy this shop. Remember? We scrimped and save, 
So if you think some little upstart gonna no waltz in here, wave a checkbook around, and take away our shop without us even batting an eye, then you got another thing coming. I married a fighter, not a coward. Who you call it a coward? You. <laughs> right. I'm gonna fight them. <laughs> Nobody gonna come here and take away my shop. This is my shop. Our shop. These are my chairs. Our chairs. Those are my plastic flowers. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Shirley. How are we gonna fight them? Listen. Tomorrow morning, I'll make an appointment for you to see the bank manager. Talk about getting a loan, hmm? We'll do the place up a bit. How up on which bit? Well, <laughs> give it a new coat of paint, get some new chairs, get rid of the plastic flowers, ah! and it would be like a new shop, a new beginning for us, hmm? Mm. And to start the ball rolling, I bought us a little something, courtesy of Bombay Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, you can't do that. You can't have a snog in the middle of my rap. Mom and Dad should have more discretion behind closed doors for a heavy neck incision. Don't do it in public. That's what you said. The best place to do it is behind the bike shed. <laughs> This is my shop. We bought it so we can kiss any way we like in it. Yeah. You're wicked, Dad. Me no. <laughs> I'll get some glasses ready. <laughs> All right, I'm coming. Yes, can I help you? I hope so. My name is Mr. Ambrose. I have an appointment to see the manager. What is it concerning? <laughs> a loan. <laughs> right, sir. A loan. Uh, uh yes. Ah, uh, I'm afraid the manager's busy. Your appointment is with his assistant. I'll talk to anybody as long as they'll give me, um, a loan. <laughs> right this way, sir. Excuse me, please. He'll be with you in a minute. Oh, thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Ambrose. <laughs> you? Take a seat, Father. Well, after Finchley Road, they moved me here. Next stop, deputy manager, then who knows? One day manager. So long have you been here? Three weeks and two days. <laughs> you never even been to see us, not even dropped in. I've been busy. I've left messages on that stupid machine of yours. You never called me back. You've never left a message on the machine. Yeah, well, your mother has. What is this world coming to when you got to talk to a machine that talks to your son before your son talks to you? <laughs> Whenever I talk to you, we always end up arguing. And you know why that is, don't you? You always get on your high horse with your ears and graces. The way you behave, you would think you was born with a silver spoon in your mouth. But, Father, what did I do? Well, look, and where's all this lady, the father? <laughs> Just can't call me dad or pops or what in old man. What's wrong with father? Well, it, 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 it don't sound right. You wanted to know why I haven't been around? It's because of you. What about me? You ashamed of me? I always know you've been ashamed of me. I'm not ashamed of you. But that's why you don't come wrong. Dad, I'm 28. I've got my own life to lead. Well, it didn't lead you wrong to our door once in a while to see your mother. Look, Bob, come in. Everything all right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you, Mandy. Um. Interest rates on a loan. He thinks they're a bit steep. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. This man's doing a good job. Uh, yes, we uh, seem to be reaching an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's just get this straight. Just because I'm black, it doesn't mean to say that I cannot appreciate the finer things in life. And just because I'm black, it equally doesn't mean that I can't have ambition or speak the Queen's English. It wouldn't go down too well if someone came to ask for a loan and I said, Wapen, me can't give you a loan because I'm an feel is a idiot. <laughs> what you don't realise is that times are changing and you're not changing with them. A war. <laughs> Now, you want a loan? Uh, I didn't come here for a checkup. Don't start. <laughs> and what do you require the loan for, Mr. Ambrose? I require the loan, 
Look, this is stupid, man. Just give me the money. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> but there are formalities. Formalities? Why well, you can't treat me like your father instead of somebody you don't know from Adam? OK. We'll go again. Father, why do you require a loan? Son, I require a loan to do up the shop. Ah. What brought this on? Well, we've been forced in it by the short and curly. <laughs> Wet look people. Yes, 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 I know them. I get my hair cut there. Not very well. <laughs> I mean, they want to buy us out or you'll be forced into competition, so your mother thinks we should get a loan. Yep. What exactly are you going to do with the loan? Well, you know, we're going to do up the place a bit, uh, get a few new customers. She wants me to get some new plastic flowers. <laughs> Dad, I think you and I need to have a talk. What are we doing now? No, a proper talk. I think I better come round to the shop sometime. Let me see. Uh, no, I can't make tonight. Squash night. <laughs> How about tomorrow? In the gym tomorrow. And then I'm having uh, dinner with the manager. Mm. It's very difficult. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll come round tonight after my game. Let's see now. Yeah, let's say uh, 7.30. Well, if you say so. OK, then. 7.30 it is then, Mr. Ambrose. Ah, oh, Mr. Patel. Uh, if you're coming later, would you like to stay for supper? I know you miss your mother fish soup and bakes. <laughs> Not now, please. Uh, shall we talk about it later, Mr. Ambrose? Ah, uh, Robbie, <laughs> nice to see you. You come for a loan? Don't worry, my son will fix it up. He is the assistant to the assistant to the assistant manager. <laughs> what do you think? I look all right? You look good, Shirley. I mean, what's all the fuss is only Michael? Well, it's not every day our son comes round to visit. Thank God for that. Yes, man. I mean, it come to a pretty pass when you got to ask your own son for a loan. That's what banks are for. But I used to give him pocket money. Now it feels as if I asking him for pocket money. <laughs> yeah, but the banks have got bigger pockets than you, Dad. Called vaults. I know that. Come on, Dad, we're still waiting for your slogan for our campaign. All right, how about... If you want to look like a girly, go to short and curly. <laughs> nah. How about short and curly, too girly, girly? If you want your hair cut, come to Desmond and Shirley. <laughs> That's wicked, Mom. Wicked? Your mom isn't wicked. <laughs> Why you can't talk prop instead of all this hard, murder, crispy, fresh nonsense? <laughs> Because that's soft, that's why. Hard isn't soft. And where does murder come into it? <laughs> Your father right, Sean. You really ought to talk properly. Oh, like Michael, you mean? Well, I wouldn't go as far as that. <laughs> <laughs> I put two bears in the fridge here for Michael, and now he's only one. Well, Michael only got one mouth. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Michael. Look, everybody. Michael, come to visit. Well, is I invited him, Shirley? Oh, so, Michael, let me look at your good. Wait, you can't remember what your own son looked like? <laughs> if he came wrong a little more often to visit his mother, I wouldn't forget. I've been hmm? busy, Mother. Busy? Busy? I always found the time to look after you when you were young. Looking after three... four children. <laughs> I always found time. So don't you talk to me about busy. Shame what? <laughs> <laughs> look like you lose weight. You're sure you've been eating properly? Of course I am, Mother. Well, look, now that you're so near, why don't you come wrong after work and get some proper food? I'm OK, Mother. I'm OK, Mother. <laughs> same old childish Gloria. Oh, same old plummy, Mark. Where's market fetcher these days? Oh. One big happy family. OK, Dad, should we have our discussion? Why not? My girl, just a little something to keep you going till <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Dad. We've got to talk seriously. You see, if you're thinking about taking out a loan, you've got to think about how you're going to pay back the interest. And eventually, how are you going to pay back the money you've borrowed? What is this? You're going to be a teacher when you grow up? <laughs> You don't do enough business here, Dad. How do you think you'll manage the repayments? Yeah, that, Charlie. 
Your son said we don't do any business here. Well, that's what the campaign's for, Mr. Buppy, to drum up trade. How about this one, sis? Oh, I've had it off at Desmond's. <laughs> Sean! Well, I thought it was a good idea. Yeah. So, Michael, what you're saying is we can't get this loan? It's not really in my power. And I don't think my boss will consider this shop a good prospect. Well, that's it, then. The end of the line. What? I mean, pork pie was right. We must find out what the man is no. offering. I'm sorry, Mother. Now, when's this Montefiore geezer coming back? Next Friday. Right. Not free. I'm talking about free badges for a pound. Come on. Well, Dad, how do we rustle up some more customers? I think it's still a bit too late, you know, Gloria. No, Bobby. It's my seat, that, you know, Vincent. Nobody sit oh. on my seat. Oh, Mum. Oh, Dad. What are you doing out of school? Indeed. Oh, the headmaster picked out the boys with the longest hair, so to come and get their hair cut to show his support. Oh, great. <laughs> What are you selling my badges for? They're supposed to be free. Nothing's free in England, Sean, me boy. I'll tell you what, I'll cut you in for 30%, all right? But we made them at school, though. All right, 50%, yeah? Hi, Good, everybody. lovely. Matthew, we've given up an important lecture to come here today for a haircut. Oh, thank you, Matthew. And what was the lecture today? Is dialectic materialism a strategy of social revolution? <laughs> I'd rather get their hair cut, Matthew. <laughs> well, Michael, doesn't it look like a business worth supporting? Yes, I'm impressed. I had no idea. Dad? What? <laughs> what would you say if I said I could get my hands on £3,000? You haven't been thiefing money from the bank, have you, son? <laughs> no. But I've been thinking, and oh, well, I've got a bit of capital, and I think perhaps I was... Well, perhaps we can make something out of the shop after all. We? Who is we? You, me, and Mother. Well, I'm proposing that I'll be one of the partners in the business in exchange for my capital investment. You hear that, Charlie? I asked the man for a loan. Now he's planning to take you over my shop. <laughs> I'm not trying to take over anything, but with my money, you'll get the loan that you need without the interest. That way we can keep the business in the family. Like a sleeping partner, you mean? Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> a very wide awake one. Wait. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me I can't run my own shop, that I need you to run it for me? With you, not for you. Well, I think it's a good idea. Well, I think it's just another game Michael wants to win. I think it's a good idea if it means the shop's gonna get done up. This day could get embarrassing, man. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right, babes. <laughs> oh, Des, you ready to talk business? Yeah. And? <laughs> Let's talk business. Look around you. This is the Peckham community. I've been running this shop for 20 years, and with my son's help, I'll be running it for another 20. So if it's competition you want, it's competition you're going to get. And I'll tell you something, Mr. Short and Cordy. <laughs> you ain't going to win. Well, I think that's it. Don't you, Dal? OK, Michael. I'll see you for your next haircut, then. Uh-uh. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, um, Daryl. Yeah? One more thing. What? Um, how much were you going to offer? 